May these words be spoken and heard in the power of love. Amen. Please be seated. Last week we started a series of sermons that are going to run through June. And during this month of Sundays, as the saying goes, we're going to be exploring the very core of our mission, what I've referred to in in the bulletin last week and this week as mission in a nutshell. It's not a new idea to try and zero in on what's the very essence of God's call on our lives. There's a famous Jewish story in the Talmud, and the Talmud is the codification and the collection of the Jewish scholars' wisdom several hundred years after the end of the Bible. And they preserved this story about Rabbi Hillel, who actually was a Jewish rabbi, more or less around the same time of Jesus. So in the first century. This is the, this is the piece from the Talmud chapter called Shabbat or Sabbath. A pagan came to him, to Hillel, saying that he would convert to Judaism if Hillel could teach him the whole of the Torah in the time that the man could stand on one foot. Rabbi Hillel replied, what is hateful to yourself, do not do to your fellow man. That's the whole Torah. The rest is just commentary. Go and study it. Clever answer. Important answer. Because it's also, it's very similar, it's reminiscent to a story that we know from the Gospels and which is at the heart of this series that we're doing during June. So let me read you out the, the passage from Mark, which is our earliest version of the so-called two great commandments. One of the scribes came near and had heard them disputing with one another and seeing that Jesus had answered them well, he asked him, which of the commandments is first of all? And Jesus answered, the first is, hear O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul with all your mind, with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. And we're familiar, of course, with, with that statement from Jesus. But we don't often hear this next bit. Then the scribe, and a scribe means a religious scholar, then the scribe said to him, you are right, teacher. Truly you have said that he is one and besides him there is no other. And to love him with all your heart and understanding and with strength and to love one's neighbour as oneself, this is much more important than whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he answered him wisely, Jesus said to him, you're not far from the kingdom of God. After that, No one dared to ask him any questions. Interesting. The tradition about Hillel and the tradition about Jesus sharing a common Jewish instinct to cut to the heart of the matter and see what what it is that we're required to do. So last week we were thinking about loving God with our hearts and this week we move on to the second part of the great commandment, loving God with our souls. The difference between last week and this week is very slight, and yet it's also huge. The heart, loving God with our heart, of course, refers to what we most value, what's out there that we put most store in, the things and the people who matter most to us, questions of the heart. The soul refers to who we are, not who do we love, what do we care about, but who am I? What kind of person am I? What's my character? What's my innermost self? That's my soul. Today, as you know, we're observing Pentecost, the festival of the Holy Spirit, the last of the great 50 days of Easter, and yet also in its own way, a fresh beginning. And Pentecost, with the focus on the spirit, on the breath of God, is a perfect time to be thinking about our soul 
or our spirit or, if you like, our innermost self. The psalm, if you're listening to the beautiful words of the psalm as the choir was singing them, it actually refers back to the creation story of Adam and Eve in Genesis chapter 2. So let's go back to that ancient Eden myth and just remind ourselves what's going on there, how it connects with Pentecost and with the idea of loving God with our soul. Unlike the poetic drama of Genesis chapter 1, where God makes the world in six days and then has a day off, beautiful idea and reflects, of course, culture that has a a seven-day cycle. In chapter 2, we find God rolling up her sleeves, or his sleeves, if you prefer, and getting her hands dirty as she gets into the soil, into the earth that she's created, And out of the earth, out of the soil, God fashions a human being, the very first person. And this is totally different from chapter one when God just says, hmm, let's make make humans, male and female, happens. In Genesis two, God goes out to the garden and gets some soil and fashions this new thing, a human. In the Hebrew, the word, and we've mentioned this on other Sundays, the word for dirt is Adama. And the earth creature, this being who's fashioned out of the earth, is of course Adam. Adam is created from Adama. The earthling is created from the earth. And then notice how this is described in that beautiful story of the garden. Then the Lord God formed the earthling, in the Hebrew, I checked it last night, the Hebrew says ha'adam, the earthling. The Lord God formed the earthling from the dust of the ground, min ha'adama, from the dust, from the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the earthling became a living soul, a living soul. In that ancient story of the Jewish people, it's only when the spirit or the breath of God is breathed into the nostrils of the earthling that the human becomes a living soul. And that's a powerful word picture for us on Pentecost. Here we are seeking to love God with all our soul, with our innermost selves, who we most truly are, And yet, even that, our distinctive, unique character as a living soul is itself the result of God's spirit already being at work within us, pulsing through us, throughout our whole being. We are who we are because of the spirit of God animating us. When we love God with our innermost self, with our soul, we're not only offering to God our most authentic selves, we're also returning to God the gift of life itself. Last week we were encouraged to ensure that we we value God about anything else out there, love God with our heart. This week we're invited to go deep inside ourselves and check that who we are our secret self, our innermost self, our soul, is receptive and responsive to the enlivening presence of the Spirit of God that breathes life into all creation. What's true of us is true of everything. What's true of everything is true of us. And as we do that, on this last day of Easter, Pentecost, day 50, what the word means. As we do this on the final day of Easter, we're embracing the true meaning of Easter. True meaning of Easter is not found in an egg hunt, nor in a hunt for the bones of Jesus. For the earliest Christians, people that Paul was writing with, to and working with, the spirit that they experienced was Jesus himself alive and ever-present with them and within them. 
So let me end with these powerful words from Paul. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. And all of us, with unveiled faces, seeing the glory of God, the glory of the Lord, as though reflected in a mirror, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. This comes from the Lord, the Spirit. Happy Pentecost. Amen.